The actors never know. We are vessels of the producers and, and writers. Eyes go boing because they're here at a many times where you're just going, what am I saying? Drama uh, behind the scenes and you know. Now, coverage like no other. Bringing you videos from the event floor. You're watching convention coverage. Been having a good show, been all right? It's been fantastic. The fans here are incredible, uh, super friendly, very chill, well-organized convention, don't you think? Yeah? See a lot of heads nodding, that's good. And hello to uh, all of you out in uh, interweb land. Future web land. So yeah, I'm glad you came to the show. I mean, I, we, we've definitely chatted over the last couple of days and yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you very much for humoring me and my stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> no questions are stupid. They just <laughs> need answers. They just, yeah, that's true. That's true. I forgot to mention at your table on Friday that I also remember that you did the voice of Alucard from Captain and the Game Master. Did I? And I just want to know whose bright idea was it to make Alu to depict Alucard as a skateboarder dude, bro, in that show. <sighs> Well, don't, first of all, I do remember the series uh, intimately. That was that was one of the first ones I did. Um, but I don't was that was that guy just in a few episodes he, or something? I think he I think he was in one episode. No, my my siblings are more invested in it than I am. Wow, you win the prize. That's really that's a deep dive. But yeah, I want to know whose <laughs> idea was it to make him depict him in such well, a way? Well, okay, newsflash: the actors never know. <laughs> you know, you, the, the way it works is, uh, especially in a, in a show where you're already playing a character of, of some level, yeah. and there, a guest role comes up, that's what's, what we call it, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be in one episode or two episodes. You you've kind of find out on the day, and like, who is this guy? Oh, he's a skateboarder. Like, <laughs> we don't even r realize what led up to that character yeah, being mm -hmm. there or who made the decision to make him. What, what should he have been? I don't know. He's he's the son of Dracula. From he's from, he's from Castlevania, so I expect I don't know, brooding. Yeah, something handsome, and I sort guess they of were rebellious. To, uh, well, rebellious they got down right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to rebel against my Dracula father by being a dude. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was the '80s. It was the '80s, late '80s, early '90s. Yeah. <laughs> so I wish I had a better answer for you, but that is, that's my answer. Yeah, it still boggles my mind. I have a, that whole show is a whole roller coaster. Like, oh, was it ever? Yes. <laughs> I'm a gamer. I know my games and it's like, what the heck? <laughs> Mother brain. Oh, yes. Mother brain. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Mother brain. on the wall. Yeah. Who's the cutest of the ball? The great I, Levi Stubbs. I, I can only think or, or imagine that that had something to do with the popularity of... Um, a little Shop of Horrors? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, a little, little bit of an homage. Some might call ripoff. <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of of the, of the time, of yeah. the moment. Yeah. So I, oh, yeah. But that was, that, yeah, that was a crazy show. Let's throw everything in it. Yeah, you should have seen how Mega Man was depicted in that show. Short and stumpy and sounded like Popeye. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, I think it was Doug Parker. Doug Parker, yeah. Ah, uh, Doug Parker. <laughs> Big, tall Doug. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only th correlation I could immediately think of, of of Alucard being a dude bro was Keanu Reeves and Dracula, but that was years apart. Whoa. He, oh, yeah. I shall go to Dracula and speak with him. Yeah. There's <laughs> wow. another deep dive. Yeah. <laughs> And in that in that series, uh, Captain and the Game Master, of course, yeah. I was Doctor Wiley. Dr. Oh yeah, Wiley. you're right, Doctor Wiley. I, I added the wheezing. <laughs> oh yeah, he did a lot of that. <coughs> I don't Fro know why. Frozen food section. Why did I do that? I don't know. Anyway, got me the role. <laughs> That's why I did it. Hey, we <laughs> like the wheezing. This Ian guy's got a thing going here. <laughs> I do wheeze a lot <laughs> in hay fever season. So thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. Brave to be number one. I was wondering, any time you voice a character, has there been any times where you're voicing your character and you're, they do something and you're just like, I don't like you right now? Oh, you mean the character that I'm playing is, is doing something awful or being a terrible person or yeah. something? Yes. All the time. Um, let me. I'm trying to think of an example. 
Uh, th th this is the thing about acting. We're, we are we are vessels of the producers and, and writers. And when a writer dreams something up, uh, you you just to the best of your ability have to present it, regardless of what you might think. So it does happen where you're kind of going, oh wow, that's kind of weird. Or actually, dra now I wouldn't I wouldn't classify this as uh, I don't like you right now, referring to the character that you're playing. But there's many times where you're just going, what am I saying? What is this? What does this mean? And that happened a lot in Dragon Ball. I'll tell you that right now. Because uh, Japanese to English translations are, are fraught with question marks. Like, what does this mean? What were they trying to say? And unless you have knowledge of the massive story arc that they were going for, sometimes things don't make sense. So that, hap that did happen a lot, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, as a 90s kid, I absolutely loved that original Saban dub of Dragon Ball Z where you were Goku, and also when you did uh, Cheetor for Beast Wars Transformers. Yeah, man. Um, so looking back on it all these years later, it's like those characters are so beloved to me because I grew up with them as a kid. Are there any other characters you did where kid folks who grew up with them, watching them as a kid, come to you and say, your performance made so much meant so much to me when I was a kid. Oh, th this happens all the time. And the older I get, <laughs> just look at me. Uh, <laughs> it, it happens more and more and more and more. And it's the, it's the coolest thing because you, you can, I peg people uh, by, I try to you know, figure out what era they were 10 years old in. And, uh, and I'll you know, dig into my, memory bank and try to pull out a reference that they'll respond to. So obviously the big ones that you just mentioned, Cheetor, Dragon Ball, Mega Man, uh, those are guys your age. But then there's a whole nother generation of people who are maybe hitting 20 now. And they grew up with stuff like Dinosaur Train. And they're not, they're a different kind of cartoon. They're not like heroic action <laughs> cartoons, but it was immersive. Like lots of little kids spent their mornings or after school watching Dinosaur Train. So like, you know, if I see a, a kid who's late teens or up to maybe 25, I'll, I'll just say, you know, hello, Pteranodon family. And their eyes go boing because they're here at a, at a convention like this for the action stuff, right? Like, oh, I know Dragon Ball, I know Cheetor. And then they realize, oh my God, that guy was like Mr. Conductor. And I watched him every day. So there's lots of stuff like that. And then there's tons of obscure things that only I know. Well, I don't mean it in that way. It's in the resume. So I mean, people who are paying attention know. But they were just um, kind of nothing characters or the series didn't really do very well. So not a lot of people saw it. Like one was, uh, one of my favorite roles was in a, in a show, I don't know how long it lasts, I think it was maybe only two seasons, called Dr. Dimension Pants. <laughs> and the character that I played in it was this evil guy called The Cortex. And it wasn't, it, you couldn't call him Cortex, it had to be The Cortex. And he was this really bad evil guy. And he was overly theatrical. It was just a fun, fun, fun voice to do. The, guy, the other cast members were really fun and, you know, talented guys, Richard Ian Cox and uh, Sam Vincent. And we just had a blast in those sessions. But, it, you know, wasn't a giant hit, so a lot of people don't know it's it. fine. First one is really easy. So, first of all, I had no idea that you were in Captain N in the Game Master. Um, that was something I grew up on. I'm was born in 1978, so, you know. Yeah. I mean, I was playing video games when those things came out. So related to that show, I was actually just curious, have you had much work with uh, Venus Torzo? Yes. Black Ven Arachnia. Venus is a, is a good friend. Uh, I, I haven't seen her in a while, um, but she, she's one of, the, one of the really good ones. She's a great person. With the, actually, the first convention I ever did, and I think this may reference back to something we talked about, was BotCon mm -hmm. in whatever it was, 99 or 2000 or something. 
And Venus was on that trip and Alec Willows was on that trip. And we all flew in from Vancouver. And you don't really know, like I, I had spent time with them, uh, but you don't really know until you're traveling with someone, like, okay, what, what are they really like? It was an absolute joy. Venus is, uh, she's up for anything. She was so easy to get along with and she's continued to be a, a good friend and a lovely person. She's great. I just think she has, you know, such a beautiful voice. And, you know, for Lana, I don't know if that's her normal speaking voice, but it was very, just very sweet. Which one is Lana? She was the princess, <laughs> so one of the main characters of Captain N. I believe that was her name, Princess Lana? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. Anyway. Sorry, I was thinking of another series. Uh, of course <laughs> it's Captain N. That is pretty much her, her speaking voice. Yeah, Not but... Black Arachnia. Very <laughs> No, lovely. that was very different. Yeah. So then, okay, so that was part one. Yes. The other question I have is a Dragon Ball uh, question. And um, the person sitting next to you, he kind of answered this. So when it came down to, you know, you were eventually um, replaced on Dragon Ball by Peter Kelmus, I yes. believe. So I was actually just wondering, when that happened, was this one of those things where it's like you had a say in leaving? Or did someone say, like, okay, hey, by the way, we're replacing you? Oh, no, no. It was completely my decision. Really? Yeah. I, I had had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it, it was, there was just, it was, there was too much screaming. Um, there was, uh, th some, uh, pro producerial, uh, drama, uh, behind the scenes and, you know, the, the pay scales and a bunch of business stuff that I was just getting tired of. And I had lots of other work to do. So, you know, it, it would be like, uh, what do you, do you, do you work? Do you have a, do you have a job? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> What's your job? I, the greatest job most people would say, I'm a quality assurance video game tester. Are you? Yes, I am. It's my career. I've been doing it for 20 years. Okay. So let's say you were, um, you were going to work for a, a, a company that you hadn't worked for. It's all new. And you're used to a certain pay scale. And then this, this other company goes, that's great. You know, you're a valuable uh, tester. And uh, we would like you to work on our project, but, uh, and, and you're going to assume you're working under the same uh, pay scale that you've been used to. And this new company goes, yeah, 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 we're, we're going to follow that. Um, and then you get your first paycheck and you go, ooh, hang on. I, I think you might have a different interpretation of what all these guidelines for payment are. And you would go, hmm, how much am I enjoying this work? Because you bring it up to them and then they go, no, 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 no. See, right here, it says we should pay you X, da, 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 da. And you would probably go, I don't think I'm going to work for them anymore. I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to move on because I'm in demand from these other companies who treat me with kindness and respect and pay me what I'm worth. So that's kind of a, that's a hazy analogy to let you know why I left. And it was completely my decision. Well, I was going to say, I'm sure that makes it feel, you know, always good. For all I know, it was just like they gave you the, the saying, like, you're out, he's in. No, no. And, and uh, I have been given the heave-ho uh, on lots of stuff. You know, you get fired for whatever reason. You know, they just go in a different direction. The worst thing is, is when you get cast for something and, you know, you get all excited. And you go, oh, this is great. I got a new series. It's wonderful. I like this character. And, but I never get truly excited until we've done a handful of episodes and even then that's that's like the 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 litmus test is you you go start a new project and you, and you still wonder you know they could still replace me it's early enough in where they go i don't know i'm not sure if we really like that we want to do this and so it's a funny business like you got to have a really tough uh skin and and be ready for any of that stuff but no this was this was completely my decision so i had a question you probably get this question a lot um but when you started acting what was your first steps or like beginning of the journey like um for voice acting <sighs> well the beginning of the journey uh started when i was re really young I, I was really into puppets oh okay. so you know, that not really, actually, I, I correct myself. I was going to say not professionally, but 
I was also a ventriloquist. Really? So I was doing professional things, like getting you know paid 25 bucks or something to show up at a kid's party. <laughs> yeah. And I did that. Uh, so it was always kind of voicey things that I was into. Mm -hmm. And then as a teenager, I started making films, mm -hmm. uh, like my own films that, that were comedy and animated. So I would you know, do stupid voices for that. Yeah. Very rudimentary. This is like Super 8 time where you would cut film and <laughs> tape it together to make edits. I mean, it's, it was, it's like oh, archaic boy. now. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that's my, my journey. And in school, I, was always, I always took drama class. I tried to do plays, even though I was terrible at remembering lines. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. I, um, did yeah. musicals. So it was always something that I was involved in. But my mm -hmm. first like, professional voice stuff was commercials for radio. Oh, okay. And the reason for that is I kind of um, realized <clears throat> in my early 20s that uh, I was living in, in Vancouver at the time. And mm -hmm. one of the, this was before there was like Hollywood North where everyone went there to make movies, mm -hmm. way before that. So I realized on a family trip once, we went to Hawaii or California or something, and we were listening to the radio and I went, those sound like the, the guys that do commercials in Vancouver. Like I recognize those voices. That's the, that's the weatherman. Yeah. And that's the guy on Seafun, the radio station. But they were doing like big time comedic commercials. Oh, okay. So I, that, the light bulb went on for me and I went, ooh, I think there's something here. Mm -hmm. So I went knocking on doors of the companies that produce those commercials, which was kind of a big thing, uh, industry in Vancouver at the time. Huh. And that's how I got into it. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. Yeah, I do want to be a voice actor when I get older. So it's... I have one tip for you. Sorry to okay. interrupt, but I have one tip for you. Reverse those two things. Voice okay. acting, turn it to acting okay. with your voice. So okay. do anything you can to act, to take class, uh, lessons for acting. Mm -hmm. Learn to act yeah. and then layer in, okay, now I'm going to add this funny voice or funny vo dramatic voice or whatever. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's my that's, tip. Oh, thank you very much. You're um, welcome. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's a lot different starting out nowadays with all the technology than it was when it, it totally is. And plus it, there's so many people now that, that want, want to. to be voice mm -hmm. actors because wh when I started, I mean, I had to explain to people what a voice actor was. I'd introduce really? myself. Oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a voice actor. Huh? What's that? You know, when you yeah. watch TV and you hear a commercial or you cartoon oh really now it's like I'm a voice actor I'm a voice actor yeah like everyone, everyone, everyone wants to be it and with yeah. you know stuff like IMDB you can find out who people are and mm -hmm. what they've done and like it's just a whole different world now oh, yeah. so I'm 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 thankful that I'm not starting out now because it's mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be tough but you know talent always wins and perseverance wins yes yes I'm I'm very determined so we'll see good but, yeah good keep Thank it up you. Hi. So before coming here, I did a little bit of a, a went down the rabbit hole a bit on Google and whatnot. And um, I, I'm not sure if you knew this, but Netflix recently did a, a Transformer series of their own. I heard. And it, it was really cool because it's like it was kind of bridging time zones. Like, like, like they started with like the original 80s design and the most recent season started doing Beast Wars. Yeah. And. I was really surprised that I saw that that you know you weren't Cheetor, and I, I think in a lot of cases they didn't get the original voice actors for a lot of stuff. Um, I think mm -hmm. they tried to do all original. Yeah, in the War but, for Cybertron trilogy, none of the original voice actors. Were there. That's that's what I thought, but it got me thinking. Have you ever done done voice work for a series or something that you ended up being so interested in that you like stayed like you continued to watch it or you continue to be interested in it even when you don't you were no longer working in on it. The, the, my honest, honest, honest answer is no, oh. because I don't, I don't even watch what I do. Oh, um, it, it th that's a personal thing. No, that's because I don't want to sit down and go, <laughs> let's watch some of me. <laughs> Ew. I can, I can respect that. I can it's kind of weird. Now there's, there's lots of uh, projects that I've been involved in that I go that that's really good and okay. you know it's not like I don't watch any of it no, of you know course. you, you kind of hey wh how did that turn out yeah and then you kind of hear 
through now with social media and everything, you hear, oh, this thing has become a thing. Yeah. So then I, I might dial in a little bit more interest in it. But yeah. essentially, once I do a performance, it's it's done and gotcha. gone. Like, I, I just don't really... It's like, not my bag. No, I, I understand. I just, like, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of people who, like, come to these panels and think, like, oh, like, this guy's the voice actor Goku. This guy was the voice actor. Like, the Beastars panel. Like, some people think, like, that they stay in the fandom, like, even if they were not a part of it any Like, even if they weren't a voice actor, I think some people still think well, that they would be a part. Like, they would still be hard into it. But they're not I wrong. I mean, there are, no, there are some actors that, that will be totally into the, the fandom of yeah. the projects that they're in. Yeah. That's just not not me and it's not and it's this is a this is a, a universal thing it's not like i pick and choose like yeah. oh i don't like that or i don't like that <laughs> like, i don't i don't want to i don't want to hear me i just like gotcha. the, the the thing that catches me off guard a lot is uh, i do a lot of commercials ah. and <laughs> something will come on like, oh what oh what's that that sounds that's that's good and I go, oh it's me. <laughs> and so I don't want to... I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> that actually happened. I was watching this commercial, and, and I was picking the H out of it. Because it was, it was sort of half animated. and go, ew, why did they choose that line for... And it, I didn't know it was, it was me. So there was, oh, no. there was like two or three animated characters. And th this is going to sound really, really douchey. But I'm, I'm like critiquing like, oh, what? The inflection on that was really weird. What a weird choice. Sometimes it's not the actor's fault. It's like whatever uh, yeah. the producers pick. Yeah. And then the next line, uh, I went, oh, but that, that's good. And then, you know, continues on. And then I realized about five minutes later, I'm, that was me. <laughs> the, the one that I said, that's good. <laughs> like, what a dick. Yeah. Oh, I really like me. So maybe maybe there's the deep psychological reason maybe. why I don't watch what I do. Yeah, he's really good. Maybe. Yeah, I really like him. Oh, that's me. Oh. <laughs> well, it's to be expected. No. Anyway. Well, thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank if, you. Uh, if I can add on top of that, has there ever been a point where, like doing doing the shows where the producers have chosen a take that you've done that you thought was a terrible take? <gasps> Has there ever been? <laughs> There's tons of them. Yeah. Um, but that would mean that I would have to be watching to hear it. So largely, I will, the, where that happens is in commercials. Because I do, I do listen to the commercials that I do because they're quick and, and they catch you off guard. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, oh, it's on. Oh, that, oh, right. I did that. And you kind of have to watch it. Right? Because you're watching whatever you're watching. So, yes, that does happen. Uh -huh. um, you know, and it doesn't. There's there's a million ways to read a line, right? It's what I think is right isn't necessarily right. It's my preference. A lot of this stuff is subjective. It's like oil paintings, right? Oh no, that's the right one. That's the wrong one. Whether you inflect properly or go up or down on a line. Yeah, you know. yeah. So when you are in the booth, like recording, is it? Do they have you read the same line in multiple different ways, or you just, or do you just read it and then they say, okay, we want you to do it this way? A little bit of both. Okay. So in in the old days, in the times of old, before the <laughs> we would try to get the cast in a room, right? Yeah. And do it sort of like a radio play. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that context, you will take a scene, and it was becoming actually I'm interrupting myself, but it was becoming rarer that everyone would be in the room together anyway. Yeah. Uh, especially in Los Angeles, people are really busy. Actors have got stuff going on here, there, and everywhere. So you would end up doing it on your own a lot anyway. But mm -hmm. in the old days, we would do it as a big chunk, and there would be a, you know, scenes are scenes. And they're, they have a beginning and an end. And you would go through it. And, you know, my line, his line, her line, his line, my line. And you would finish it, and then you would get notes. And then you would do that whole scene again. And then maybe they would pick, okay, let's do that one line over again, and let's do that one line over again. So that was the way it used to be. Now, uh, you're largely working on your own, and you go through a script, and you, you skip down to all of your lines. You know, they'll have chunks of dialogue in between. And usually, it's give it to us three ways, depending on how long the line is. If it's a really long line, you might do it 
just once, and then and then you get notes. Yeah. So you'll you'll do the do the line three ways. It's short. You know, like what's that over there? What's that over there? What's that over there? You know. Mm-hmm. And then the producer will either or director will either go B and move on, mm-hmm. or they'll they'll go well. Actually, in the context of what we're seeing here, think about this. This is what's going on, mm-hmm. and give us another three. And that's kind of how how it works now. Okay. So you do multiples, and then uh-huh. they choose. Okay. Yeah, that's super interesting insight. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah. Yeah. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate you coming to the show. Thank you, Ian, for definitely coming to our show and being a guest. I'm happy to be here. Oh, one last thing, my soapbox. If you have a little extra cash, I'd be really happy for you to not spend it on an autograph, but think about our cousins and, you know, probably somewhere in everyone's lineage, there's a little Ukrainian in all of us. Send something to the Red Cross, the UN, whatever your charity of choice, it, maybe, maybe it's a Christian thing, whatever. Send a little something to the Ukrainians because those people are tough, they're fun, and they're oppressed. And do what you can for Ukraine. That's my two cents. I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> and that thank you very much. The, that's one of the rare times you're going to see me deadly serious. <laughs> but thank you very much again. Give a big round of applause, Mr. Ian James Corlett.